Hello and welcome to another unboxing video for SceneWorld. It's another parcel from Fusion Retro Books and this is the second part of our Zap coverage. So let's open the box. And inside we have Arcade Days, the game from the annual Kickstarter and issue one of New Zap 64 on Micro Action. So if you've been following, I did a look through the sampler for issue one in a previous video and this is the final version released at the end of March 2021. The magazine will now be coming out every two months so the next one will be ready at the end of May and it's yet to be decided whether there'll be an annual as well as the magazine. So let's look at the cover which is issue one of the original Zap by Ollie Frey. It's based on Elite and it's been zoomed in so it looks a bit different and we can see from the taglines We've got Cosmos Designs, a look at all their games, Soul Force reviewed, Steve Shields Zapback, the former editor, Adventure Trail with Colin Bell taking on the White Wizard role, and 10 reviews and previews, and there's Rockford. So, Art by MCH, been doing illustrations for retro games recently, contents page, it's half the mag it used to be, a joke suggested by Perry Fractic. And if you haven't seen his channel, I suggest you go and watch it now. And then Roger Keane, my swan song. Unfortunately, um, Roger is having to retire from working on Zap due to being diagnosed with motor neuron disease. And with that, the Kickstarter back has made a big donation to MND, the charity. And then Chris Hawkins talking about are you saying thank you to Roger and Ollie? And this motley crew are the reviewers. So we've got Perry Fractic, Christian Simpson, Robin Hogg, Paul Morrison, Paulie Mose, Matt Allen, known as Mayhem, Chris Wilkins himself, the editor, and Spectrum fan, and myself at the bottom there. And to go straight in with the first review, Soul Force, 95%. Superb game. I rated it even higher. And we had an internal discussion with all the scores to work out what the final rating should be. And then Attack of the Petsky Robots from 8-Bit Guy. And here you can see the adapter to use a Super Nintendo pad. And you can also see different versions of the game here. So this is the Pet Amber version, the full color enhanced version on the C64. And we then go on to Showdown from Badger Punch Games, fun little Western shooter been made a physical release by Bitmap Soft, and I personally enjoyed Snowdown, the Christmas version, more. Juanjo Juega in Sinverland, Spanish game from Picaro Games, their biggest release to date. Very interesting mix of screens based on classic games, uh, inspired by a YouTuber in Spain who talks about retro games. Neptune Land Elite from C64 Mark, type in books website. And it's a very polished update of the old Lunar Lander style game with three different craft, different difficulty levels, a brilliant tutorial section that helps you get into the game. And then Zap Wrap, the letters page. A very important part of the magazine. Readers write in with their letters or email, as the case may be these days. And Lloyd Mangrum is still on hand to answer them. So then back in the days, Steve Shields Zap's final editor before it became Commodore Force. Way of the Exploding Fist. Talking about there, Thing on a Spring. Beachhead 2 and Elidon from Orpheus. Interesting, we've just found the uh, programmer of Elidon, so hopefully we can talk to him about that game sometime. More Summer 1985 bits, Top of the Pops, Top 5 Newbies. And then the Zap Back review, looking at a game that was never reviewed in the original pages of Zap. This is Chicken from 1995, released in the UK by Electric Boys. And it's a fun little game created by John Ferrari, best known for his budget games. Crypt of Chaos advert there. And then we have the time I visited Flare Software. So Robin talking about when he went up there. Zap Adventure, the new Chronicles of the White Wizard. Colin Bell taking on the role, adventure news, Bridal Witch Chronicles coming soon, new vampire themed role playing adventure, 
adventure review of Hard Sword 2. Um, with a little bit of censorship, there is some adult themes in that game from Double Sided Games. Unfortunately, the physical versions are no longer available, and Double Sided Games are no longer shipping to the UK, so you might miss out on some of their titles. Simon Butler's Art Gallery. Fantastic artwork as ever picked by a veteran graphic artist, Chiller 2. Andy from Cosine, a great fun game based on the original Chiller. Oyup, Puyu Backwards, based on Puyu Puyu, console game. Oh, and particularly Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, the Sega Mega Drive reskin version. And that was good fun. I did find it a little tricky understanding the scenario mode, but that's all taken care of in the ratings. And there's a heading game called Gypsy Juggler in there, which has now been released separately. Advert for 8 bit kids from. Cohen de Brandon Bar, very good book there. Shadow of a Hawk's Mill was going to be in the annual, but uh, held back 80% for that game from Icon 64. Brilliant intro sequence. And then Perifractic reviews The Empire Strikes Back from Megastar and Chris Stanley. Amazing artwork going on here. Created on other formats and effectively 3D. And then transferred to the C64, and I've had a lot of fun playing the preview that we had. And that's coming soon. And Zap Creation by Paolo Pomez, who was part of Soul Force's artwork. And cool little picture here based on Loom from Lucasfilm. And then into my cover feature, the games of Cosmos Design. So a little bit about the history there. And then we go through from 1989 forwards as we look at Cosmos Designs, and there's some classic ones in here that I really like, Super Nibbly, Fred's Back, Cosmox is a particular favourite of mine, Heavenbound, really enjoyed Heavenbound, and then of course Outrage, which was in development for 30 years, and is reviewed here, being released by Prodivision and Cytronic on cartridge and disc respectively, and I did enjoy it, very similar to Hawkeye. And then there's that flash with Jazzcat, David Simmons, hot date of vintage hardware, Flimbo's Quest, 25th anniversary, talking with the team there. Stoker from Reese Cladworthy, looks amazing. Jets Away, Robot Jet Action, brilliant single screen game with a jetpack. The Protopad from Protovision. I pre ordered this myself, looks like it's going to be very useful for playing on the C64. Oink Oink, it's a pigtail. Next game from Antonio Savona, Morris T, and Aldo and Gitano Ciumno on the music. And then the sign off from Chris Wilkins and Roger Keane. There's an advert for Outrage and introducing Shift, the new British anthology comic on the back cover. And Shift is advertising Zap 64. So we'll take a quick break there and then we'll look at Arcade Days. So, if you watched my review of the Zap Annual 2021, you will have seen the diary of making arcade days, Trevor Story, Stuart Collier, Saul Cross on music and sound effects, and I was one of the team playtesting it, along with Vinnie Meinolfi and Lou Dimovsky. Uh, and on the back here, arcade days, screenshots from Commodore 64 version, published in 2021 by RGCD and Cytronic and designed to look like the classic Imagine packaging. This is the exclusive cartridge edition produced in association with RGCD in their new beautifully polished packaging. And it will only be available through the Kickstarter. So if you missed it, you have missed out. And the goodies in here we have a little RGCD badge. RGCD sticker and I can put it gently out. We have the instruction manual, beautiful cover by Trevor Story. We also got RGCD postcard there with some of their games on. So arcade days, and you can see in the background Kelly and the White Cat. Is there another page there? I can't see if I turn that page. Oh, yes, I have the game. 
Ah, the local arcade. How many hours did we spend glued to the screen and how many coins did we chuck into them? But how many did you complete? Was there always the same name at the top of the high score? The best arcade in town. Can you be the new coolest kid and complete every arcade game? Can you take the crown away from the legendary Kelly and the Puss Puss Gang? Kelly named after Stuart's wife. Loading instructions for the various formats. Oh, it's a cartridge. Load straight Move Eric through the arcade and collect coins dropped by Kelly and, the ex and exchange them for tokens to play the machines. The token booth in the middle. When you, once you have collected 10 coins, go to the token booth and exchange them for a game token using the arcade machine. Complete every arcade game to become the new arcade king and send Kelly and her two cats yin and yang packing. Failure to complete a game will have you kicked out of the game and you must collect the coins and tokens again. Keep clear of the cats as a single touch will send you into a spin for a few seconds. Running into Kelly will result in losing a life. Well, what are you waiting for? Insert token and get playing. There's a reprise of the cover artwork. Controls. The game is controlled by joystick, port 2. In the arcade, the joystick moves the player around the screen, pressing fire in front of an arcade machine, or the change booth will activate them. So you can only start an arcade game if you've got a token. And if you've completed a game, you can't go back to it. In the arcade games, you'll be able to move using the joystick, pressing fire will attack or thrust. Status panel at the top, your lives. I take that back, status panel is at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I play tested this, I should know this. Status panel at the bottom of the screen, lives, score, tokens, coins. Playing hints in the arcade, time your movements to avoid opponents. Coins don't disappear, so don't get greedy trying to grab a coin until you know it's safe to do so. Remember, cats don't kill you, they just stun you. Credits programmed by Stuart Collier, graphics and game design by Trevor Story, music and sound effects by Saul Gross, packaging artwork by Trevor Story, additional packaging design by Jason Kent McKenty, cartridges produced by James Monkman, RGCD, tape mastering by Richard Bayless and Martin Piper, and Icon 64 production. And there we can see the screen display with the loading screen, the menu, and some of the games. So there's 18 different machines, three variations of each of six games. And the next part of this video will in fact be looking at the game itself. Here's the cartridge, the domed label, and at the bottom here you can see RGCD. So keep watching for Gameplay. Welcome to this look at Arcade Days by Icon64. This, of course, is the Kickstarter game perk for the Zap Annual 2021, created by Stuart Collier, Trevor Story, and Saul Cross. Stuart on the code. Art and game design, Trevor Story. Music and sound effects, Saul Cross. As you can see from the title screen, we can choose Kitty Mode, Easy Level, Master Mode, difficult level and practice mode which allows you to play all of the arcade games for free so you'll see it says use tokens to play the arcades Kelly drops the tokens and her cats run around and spin you around if they collide with you so let's start it up so I did help test this play test this game so I knew you know, Quite a bit about it in kitty mode each coin is worth five here in master mode they're worth two each so you need to pick up five coins in master mode like so and exchange it for a token so you can see there are 18 little arcade machines three of each type and we'll start off with machine one and this is a tank game. Explore the maze, shoot the tanks. Once you've hit some number of tanks, you complete the machine. And once you've completed all 18 machines, you are the master of the arcade. But that was just to show you what happens when you go wrong. Or oh, I could have just played badly. 
Oh, as you can see, the cat spins you around if you run into it, which leaves you vulnerable to being hit by Kelly. If you hit by Kelly, you lose a life. So let's look at Machine 2. Machine 2 is a classic Pac-Man game with familiar Pac-Man style graphics. Ghosts will home in on you, which is when you need to use the power pills at the corner and you score more points for killing the ghosts. And it's working out the pattern to get around without dying. And the music in the background by Saul and the sound of X. Saul was inspired by two or three different 80s songs and the soundtrack of Lazy Jones by David Whittaker. I've failed again at Machine 2. So let's carry on picking up coins. Trying to show you one of each machine as though there are three different variants of each game type. So you've got the maze game, the Pac-Man game, the centipede game, the frogger game, the lunar lander game. And you see if you leave Kelly running around for a while you can pick up quite a few coins. And the final type of game is Space Invaders. So I find it can be better to collect enough coins for say two or three tokens and go and pick them up at the same time then you can retry a game repeatedly until you win so let's go up and look at game three which as you can see is centipede so the centipede makes its way from the top of the screen, shoot the segments and of course in classic centipede style you can also move up and down the screen once you've eliminated all the parts of the centipede. You complete the section. And there we go, so that machine is now completed. And we'll show you the well done message. The next machine, number four there, is another Pac-Man machine, so we'll go and play a different one. And it's the Frogger. Or in this case, the Starship Frogger. And in kitty mode, you only have to get a couple of your spaceships, your frogs across to their homes. In master mode, you have to get all of them. I'm going to die there. And I lost a life. So we'll move on and look at the next machine. And this is the Lunar Lander style game, Lunar Rescue style game. And you'll be able to hear the Lazy Jones Stardust tune section playing at the moment. So again, master mode here, you need to get all of the astronauts back to the mothership. In kiddie mode, it's not as difficult. 
And again, the graphics change depending on which machine you play of the three of this variation. So that's another machine completed. And you can see there's the black cat roaming around at the moment. When you get further into the game and have completed, I think it's more than half the machines, a second cat, a white cat, joins in and starts moving around the, the arcade as well. So we just got one more type. Oh, I've picked the wrong machine there. This is another Frogger variant. This is, looks more like classic Frogger. So what I meant to do was This is the uh, the tank game, variation on tank game. This is one of my least favourites when we were play testing. Because the firing patterns and the number you had to defeat, it takes a lot of practice to get this machine right. to be accurate when you're firing and you only fire one bullet at a time. It's over over twenty tires wheels you have to hit to to win this round. Which feels like a real challenge in master mode. To do it without making a mistake, getting hit. It is possible I've managed to complete the game in testing. And there we go. So now I just need to show you the Space Invader style game. And you've seen all the variants. I do like the way the little screens animate in the arcade gives you a sense of being in a real arcade there we go there's a token I'm trying to remember which machine is the space invaders at the moment that's a centimede oh this is the other tank game again this is one that takes a while to complete These are jeeps or cars. I do like the way the bonnet flaps as it moves backwards and forwards. Great assortment of graphics from Trevor Story. And it's a brilliant loading screen as well. it takes a while to complete this this game there's a couple of other variations in how the games play one of the pac-man rounds the wheels go round and lay the dots and you have to pick up enough dots to complete it which is a good twist And there's the problem is you couldn't see that bullet in time. It's very tricky that one. So I gotta pick up enough coins to get a token.
Oh, that's what happens when you die. Okay, you trapped me in a corner there. So I can get a couple of tokens now. This is the frog again. Until it's been a while since I played it to test it. Can't remember the order of the machines. Because it's character-based movement in this Frogger game, it can be quite tricky to get yourself in the right position. Oh. Chose the wrong machine again. <laughs> Go back and get another token. This. This is one of the Space Invader variants. There's three, three of them, different ones, and this one is quite interesting with the... Well, I've thought of them as blimps in testing. Blimps, balloons, whatever you want to call them. You can do the classic... trim tactic. Your bases soon disappear, don't take many hits. And that's what happens. So that's a look at arcade days. Hope you've enjoyed this video looking at issue one of the New Look Zap and the arcade days game created as a perk for the Zap Manual 2021. If you want more on both of those, the annual and the new magazine then please visit fusionretrobooks.com and if you're interested in arcade days then that will be available as a standalone game from Cytronic later in 2021 so again I hope you enjoyed this video Keep watching the Scene World channel for more news, reviews, interviews and unboxing.